Hey guys, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and today I want to talk to you about my top 10 favorite third-party plugins for mixing and mastering. This has been a highly requested video, so here it is. So for this video, I'm going to omit plugins like Melodyne, Autotune, and Vocaline, since I consider those plugins more for vocal editing, not mixing. I'm also omitting plugins that are software instruments, uh, and I'm also going to omit any plugins that require any uh, special type of hardware, like the UAD plugins from Universal. Also, I should mention that these plugins are in no particular order, other than grouping the like plugins together. Number one is HEQ from Waves. Um, this is pretty much my go-to EQ for all channel EQ. Um, the only thing I really don't use it for is uh, EQing uh, buses and aux tracks. Um, I don't use it much on like a master fader too much other than to maybe cut the low end out when I've got some bass management issues. Um, HEQ is very, very versatile. I love the fact that we get this nice um, frequency display. I love the fact that we have a keyboard that tells us uh, musically where the bands are too. So if I have a song like say in the key of A and I want the, um, you know, my band boost to be centered around A, that's what it does. It puts the center frequency of each band on a musical value and you can move that around down here or you can move it around up here. So it's really cool. Uh, let's try this out just to uh, maybe brighten up the sibilance of these vocals a bit. Maybe cut out some of the boxiness and beef up the low end a bit. And we'll also scoop out the, the sub low end in her voice. They say that love is one hell of a drug. So why and then if we end up clipping, it has a, an input and output gain control so we can get rid of that. They say that love is one hell of a drug. The other thing I love about HEQ is actually using it in stereo. If you put it on a stereo track, you can actually individually um, EQ the left and right channel separately. So you can do something like this where you unlink the left and right channels. You can do whatever you want to the left channel. It's in the orange line there. And then you can click on right and you can EQ the right channel separately. So this is great if you're maybe miking something with two different mics, uh, but it's the recording was done on a stereo track and you want to EQ the two, uh, the two mics uh, a little bit differently. It's also really helpful if you just want to make the left channel uh, vary a little bit frequency wise from the right. Number two is the Clarifonic Parallel EQ from Cush Audio. Um, I absolutely love this plugin. It's a little pricey. It's, I think it's about 200 bucks. Uh, what it is, is it's a parallel EQ just for the high end. So the main thing I use this plugin for is to enhance um, the high frequencies on a master, like the on the entire track on the master output, just to boost the high end, but in a very clean, transparent way. Most EQs, if you just boost the high end, um, it gets kind of grainy and starts and fizzy in the high end, starts to hurt your ears a little bit. Um, the Clarifonic does it in a very, very nice way. Um, and basically what it does is it's a parallel EQ. So it splits your signal into two different bands, a focus band and a clarity band, and then sums those back together. And there's these various um, circuits, different modes that you can use to maybe uh, tighten and mix and focus uh, the sound a bit more or if you want your upper frequency uh, upper frequencies to be a little bit more open and diffused. So this is typically what I use for mastering, mastering is open and diffused and I'll pull the clarity uh, up a bit with sheen and silk. And it's just like, a, it's a very nice um, high-end boost that isn't too um, intrusive uh, on the signal. So let's uh, hear our whole mix here with and without the, uh, the Clarifonic in. So I'm using it uh, just a touch of it, just to bring out the bring out the the high end, bring out the air in the recording. Another thing I'll use it on is I'll I'll throw it right on the vocal track just to bring out some of the sibilance uh, in the vocals if I find that the vocal recording is a bit dead sounding. Number three is the API 2500 compressor from Waves. Uh, obviously, this models the real API 2500 um, uh, dual channel. Uh, unit. Now the, the 2500 is typically used as a bus compressor or as a mastering uh, compressor. I've used the real thing on software recordings 
as a mastering comp, and it works really good for that. But the wonderful thing about having this in plug-in form is that um, it's actually a really, really nice channel compressor, too. It, I'll, I'll use it on drums. I'll use it on guitars. I use it on a lot of things, pretty much anything but vocals I've used it on. Um, it's really nice. It's it's uh, got a lot of the, the API character in it, and it works really, really well on, on again, on whole groups of instruments. So one thing I, I commonly use this on is on my master bus. It's gonna, it'll be my master bus compressor, where I sort of glue the signal together a bit before I send it um, to like the master limiter for volume. So uh, let me just try this out. I, d I have the master limiter off, um, and I'm just going to sort of add a little gain and sort of glue this whole mix together with the API. Uh, in particular, I like the old circuit over the new uh, circuit. The uh, the old circuit's a little bit warmer. The new circuit's a little bit brighter. Next up is the CLA-3A from Waves. This is part of the classic uh, compressors bundle from Waves, which also includes the uh, a model of the LA-2A as well as a model of the 1176, both of which are great plugins, but I find myself uh, going back to the LA-3A most of the time uh, for vocals. This is pretty much my number one uh, compressor I use for compressing vocals. Um, I love it's very simple. There's just two knobs, a peak reduction knob and a gain knob. So basically you pull both of these up, you get uh, more compression, you pull these down, you get less compression. So let's hear these on some vocals. They say that love is one hell of a drug. So why settle for one? Cause there's just too many fish in the sea and I know I want them as much as they want me. No and you can also use it as a limiter. So this is great for just pulling down a lot of the transients in the, in the recording, in the vocal recording, and then pulling up the overall volume. Number five is the Drum Leveler from Sound Radix. This is one of my absolute favorite plugins of all time, and it's uh, kind of a newer plugin. It's really, really cool because you can compress your drum signal, or you can apply compression to a drum signal just above a given threshold. So this is great because you can bring out just the transient in a live drum recording, or in my case here, we're using sort of like an EDM um, kick as an example. Um, and then you can actually gate out anything that you don't want. So you can actually get rid of some of the signal uh, that falls below that certain threshold. So it's really a smart compressor, compressor slash gate. Um, and like for this song, I'm actually using it to control the tail of this kick drum and uh, make it make the kick a little bit shorter so it doesn't um, boom, it doesn't get so woofy in the sub. So let's just listen to this and let's, let's sort of clean up the tail on this kick here. So we took out some of the, the boominess in the tail of this kick and we can pull the hold and recovery up and pull the gate up a bit if we want to get that boominess back. Uh, drum leveler is absolutely a necessity for me now when it comes to mixing live drums because it just allows me to deal with isolation issues and, and cross talk between, uh, between mics by mildly gating or fully gating and then compressing each drum mic. Number six is the H delay plugin from Waves. It's a pretty stock, pretty typical delay. It's just really easy to use, and I really like the sound I get out of it. Um, you can sync it to your tempo. You can sync it to musical timing. Um, you can filter out the the delay signal so that your wet signal comes through um, a little, you know, more filtered than the uh, than the dry signal. And I also love the ping pong effect where you can get the uh, the delay to move back, uh, move left and right in the speaker. So here's just with the standard setting with the half note delay on some vocals. But I think that's, I fine. Think that's fine. And here's with the ping pong delay. But I think that's but fine. I think that's fine. So I'll use this a lot on vocals. I'll use it a lot on synthesizers. I've used it on, uh, I've actually used it in conjunction with reverb to make more out of uh, like the reverb tail to make something sound even more ambient than it, uh, make a, a reverb plugin sound even more ambient than it really is. 
Number seven is the Lexicon Native PCM Reverb, specifically the Vintage Plate Reverb. When you buy this uh, bundle, you, uh, you get like six different Lexicon uh, Reverb plugins, but I specifically like the Vintage Plate more than the others. I really love um, this Reverb because I lo love that I can just go to a preset and just tweak the preset a little bit and I get a great, great sounding uh, Reverb tail. Um, I'm, I, for vocals, I really like to use the bright Vox setting and I love that I can just sort of dial down the high end, um, to make the reverb a little bit warmer if I like, um, let me just dial down the mix here, um, dial up the diffusion and let's, uh, give this a listen on some vocals. They say that love is one hell of a drug, so why settle for one? Um, for drums and such, I really like using a lot of the, uh, the drum and instrument plates. It works really well for, there's a lot of stuff for guitar that works really well under instrument plates for drums. There's a lot of, uh, uh big drum rooms that sound really cool. So yeah, definitely my absolute favorite, um, reverb plug is the uh, vintage plate from Lexicon. Number eight is the S1 Imager from Waves. Um, so for this one, I've got a different session up here in Pro Tools. Um, basically what the S1 Imager does is it allows you to pan um, uh, stereo content and also apply a, uh, a stereo spread to stereo content. So one of the things about Pro Tools is that stereo tracks have two balancers, they have two, uh, two pan knobs. So rather than trying to toy with um, both pan knobs, when I want a, a stereo signal to pan more left or more right, I'll just throw the S1 on there and play with the asymmetry and the rotation um, to sort of get this askewed um, sort of stereo uh, sound. So uh, in an example like this, I've got um, two electric guitars that had two mics on each on, on the cab. And so I want to double these up. They're the same thing. They're rhythm, they're sort of these heavy metal rhythm guitars. Um, and together, you know, they sort of collide. But if I pull the, uh, the imager in there, we get this really nice wide rhythm guitar sound. So I pan one mostly left and pan the other one mostly right. We get this really nice wide uh, sort of heavy metal rhythm sound. This works really well for acoustic guitar as well if you're miking up acoustic guitar with two mics instead of one. So that's the S1 Stereo Imager from Waves. Number nine is the Vitamin plugin from Waves. I almost exclusively use this plugin for mastering, um, although you can use it on instruments as well. Um, I love it because it's essentially a, a sonic enhancer. It lets you um, enhance the harmonic series on uh, one of five different frequency ranges. So you can actually just like check your low end and then enhance or not enhance the low end, or maybe check the mid-range and do the same thing. And then you can put everything together with individual sonic enhancement on each band. So here's uh, without it. So it's really great for just sort of bringing the presence out uh, out in your mix. The other thing I really love about it is each band has its own individual spread knob. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll spread out the high frequencies, but keep the low frequencies more centered. And lastly, number 10 is the Pro L limiter from FabFilter. This simply, in my opinion, is just the best software limiter out there. Um, it really, really can get you very, very, very loud uh, master volume without compromising clarity. Usually what I'll do is it's the last actual processor in my signal chain, either on my stereo output or when mastering, um, I usually choose the, the transparent um, style and I just start dialing the gain up and, until, it, uh, until it sounds uh, where I want it to be and I'll just use like a, a meter to sort of meter the, the level to make sure that I'm hitting negative 10 RMS. Um, so let's just hear what this sounds like on my uh, on my whole track here. Got it. 
And I love the, the fact that it gives you a real-time readout of everything, too. Let's go over to our drop here, the loud section. So again, Pro-L, uh, pretty much, in my opinion, the best uh, software limiter out there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, sampling of my top 10 favorite uh, plugins for mixing and mastering. I hope you go out and try some of these on your own. Most of them have demos that you can try out before you buy them. Really, these are, in my opinion, vital, vital tools in my mix workflow. I tend to use fewer plugins than more plugins in most of my mixes. I um, I don't experiment much. I hate to say it, but I don't experiment much with new plugins. I pretty much use these 10 plugins with a few others as well, but these 10 are pretty much my go-to uh, plugins, my go-to compressors, EQs, delay, reverb, uh, imager, and then mastering tools. Let me know in the comment section below what uh, plugins you guys really like for, uh, for mixing and mastering. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. Hey guys, if you'd like to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel to see multiple new videos added every week. Also, you can check out carneymediagroup.com where you can view all of my video tutorials, search for specific topics, download the videos ad-free, and in some cases you can purchase session content so you can work along with me in the video. Also, please consider giving a monthly contribution at patreon.com forward slash musictechhelpguy. As always, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.